Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about robot design. Designing a robot for first LEGO League can be a bit overwhelming if it's your first time. But the techniques I'm going to talk about today have been proven. I mean, I've been coaching for 10 plus years. Run regionals, nationals, we made it to internationals. The strategies I'm going to talk about today can be applied to your team this season. My go-to design is a modular robot. This means that you have one standard base and then all you need to do is build different attachments that you can add to your robot, like so, to complete certain missions, depending on what the mission is. So that means your actual robot base doesn't change and the only thing you have to change are the attachments. The advantage of this is you can actually build this design before the season starts. Time is always an issue in first LEGO week. So if you have a chance to build your robot beforehand, take it. What do I look for in a robot base? One of the main things I look for is a balanced box design. Box is definitely one of the best strategies I've used. You can easily align it with walls on the first Ugly League table, which takes off quite a few seconds when you're launching your robot. You quickly pop it against the back wall, line up an edge on a black line, and press go, you're ready to go. Another thing I look for is supporting the wheels of your robot. As you can see in this robot, the wheels are supported by the motor, but they're also supported on the other side by the wall. Now this allows it to drive straight up, particularly when you have a, a sizable attachment. Now this one's not too bad, but some attachments get really heavy, like you're carrying things across the table. So if you have a heavy table, that can push down on the wheels, making them bend slightly inward, and that affects how straight your robot drives. Balance. When I'm building a robot, I'm looking for a balanced weight. You don't want all the weight at the back or all the weight at the front. If you can try and even it out, that will give you more consistent turns. I like to use wheels without tires opposed to the ball bearing. You can look back at my other video here to see why that is. Right, and the reason I use this is because having four wheels when you're driving straight is really effective. Next thing you need to think about is your tire choice. Now there's a few different types of tires available. So you've got your common, your blue wheels from the Spike Prime, and then you've got the bigger ones as well. Uh, you might have an old EV3 kit with the thicker wheels, um, which gives you a little bit extra tread. And my fa personal favorite is this 62.4 Lego wheel. Now, as you can look at the size difference there, the diameter of this one is slightly more, which allows you to drive faster. But the grip on this wheel compared to the blue spike wheel is massively better. As soon as, as, soon as my team switched from using the blue spike wheels to these uh, 62, 62.4 Lego wheels, uh, the accuracy improved dramatically. No more was the robot slipping on turns. It grips the mat and it goes where you want it, as long as you've got some smart programming to go with it. This yellow bot design has a couple of attachment points. You can attach to the top of the robot using these gear points. And this one also has front gears that you can attach to. So for example, if we look at this attachment that was from a, a previous season, there's a gear on the attachment that connects to the top of the robot, and there's a gear on the front which connects to the front gear. So if I put this on, look how easy that was to put on for starters. This is called the, the gravity technique. So it's got these little blue uh, star pegs. They just help align it. They don't lock it in. It just uses gravity to hold it in place. It goes on super quick and it's super easy to take off, as you can see here. Now, next question, Do, should you use a color sensor? I always like to include at least one color sensor in my designs. Some teams like to use two in the corners uh, just to help align with black lines. As we've seen in recent years, the black lines seem to be getting less on the first leg of league mats, meaning a lot of teams are moving away from the color sensor and 
changing it to say the motor encoders or just the inbuilt gyro sensor to control themselves around the map. I still like to have one, particularly since my teams build the robot ahead of, ahead of the season, they've got a color sensor to line follow if they need to. Um, but primarily, I find it's a lot easier to just use the, the inbuilt gyro sensor and the motor encoder and exactly how many degrees you want to travel forward and how many degrees you want to move to the left and the right. Now let's move on to coding. If you want true accuracy, you need to ditch the pink motor blocks. My teams primarily rely on a gyro, the gyro sensor and a proportional controller to go with it. Meaning the robot drives straight using the gyro sensor. So if we set it to zero degrees, it, it travels at exactly zero, zero degrees. And if you bump the robot, of course, let's say it runs over something on a table like a piece of krill uh, and it bumps off course, the gyro sensor auto corrects it back to its zero degrees heading. Now this is really useful um, for accuracy. If you wanna know more about the coding and some advanced techniques to really give your team the edge. That's what I talk about in my online course. You can head to this link and join up. Remember, there's not only one strategy to be successful, there's many. This is just from my experience and what I have found that has worked for my teams. If you'd like a copy of these designs, head to nextlevelteacher.com to get started today. That's all for now, happy building.